Hello everyone, welcome to the SQRT channel. In this video, we are going to take a problem from the algebra tiebreaker of a Stanford Mass Tournament from 2022. Let's take a look at the problem first and we are going to solve it in the next part of the video. Here in this problem, we have x, y, and z as real numbers and we already know that x squared plus 2 times y squared plus 3 times z squared is equal to 96 and we are going to find the maximum possible value that we have for x plus 2y plus 3z. Let's see how we are going to solve this problem now. To solve it I'm going to use an inequality because it's talking about the maximum possible value so it's going to be an inequality. We have two famous inequality that I'm going to review and then we will decide which one is the one that we are going to take. The first one is AMGM inequality. We have positive real numbers like x1 up to xn and we are going to say that the arithmetic mean of these numbers is going to be greater than or equal to the geometric mean. In other words, we have sigma of xi for i equals to 1 to n over n is going to be greater than or equal to the nth root of x1 times x2 times up to xn. We are going to have the equality condition when x1 is equal to x2 equals to x3 up to xn. The other inequality that we need to be aware of is the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. Here we have a1 up to an and b1 up to bn as real numbers. Based on this inequality, we have a1 squared plus a2 squared up to an squared times b1 squared plus b2 squared up to bn squared is going to be greater than or equal to sigma of ai bi for i equals to 1 up to n to the power of 2. Now which one of these two inequality is the one that I'm going to use? I'm going to use the second one which is Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. Let's see how we are going to use it in the next part of the video. But before that make sure that you understand these two inequalities because they are going to be useful for the problems that you are going to solve for different math competitions and Olympiads. Now let's see how we are going to use it. Remember we have x squared plus 2 times y squared plus 3 times z squared. Now if we take a look at the inequality that we have, the most straightforward approach is going to be using x, y, z for the second multiplicative term and 1, 2, 3 for the first term. So we are going to end up with 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared times x squared plus y squared plus z squared is going to be greater than or equal to x plus 2y plus 3z to the power of 2. Now let's take a look at this inequality that we have here. Let's take a look at the left hand side for now. On the left hand side we have two terms. The first term is a number, which is good. The second term is something that we don't know, the value that it's going to take. On the other hand, we are going to end up with something on the right hand side that we are interested in. Unfortunately, it's not going to take us anywhere at least not easily. Instead of using what that was straightforward, I'm going to change what we are going to take for the first term and the second term in the next part of the video. The reason that I didn't want to do so was I wanted to make sure that you understand what we are going to do and what's the trick here. Let's use what is going to take us to the final outcome easily. This time, instead of using 1, 2, and 3 as the most straightforward approach and then end up with 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared, I'm going to use 
radical 1, radical 2, and radical 3. So the first term that I'm going to have is going to be radical 1 to the power of 2, then radical 2 to the power of 2, and then radical 3 to the power of 2. It's going to be easy. We are going to end up with 1, 2, and 3, as you are seeing here. What we are going to use for the second term here is also tricky. We need to have x squared, y squared, and z squared. But I'm going to use x squared plus 2 times y squared plus 3 times z squared. As you can see here, this means I used radical 1 times x, radical 2 times y, and radical 3 times z for the terms that can be used as bi. Now using those terms on the right hand side, I'm going to end up with radical 1 times x plus radical 2 times radical 2y plus radical 3 times radical 3z, all of them to the power of 2. Now it's kind of very interesting here. You are going to see x squared plus 2 times y squared plus 3 times z squared. We already know what value it's going to take. Based on the problem, it's 96. On the right hand side, we have everything that we need to have. On the left hand side, we have a constant number. Let's review it again. What we are going to have on the right hand side after multiplications of simple terms, we will have x plus 2y plus 3z. And that's what we are interested in. The thing that we have now is 6 times 96 is going to be greater than or equal to x plus 2y plus 3z to the power of 2. So x plus 2y plus 3z is going to be between SQRT root of 6 times 96 and negative SQRT root of 6 times 96, which is going to be 24 and negative 24. So as you can see here, the maximum possible value that x plus 2y plus 3z is going to take is 24 and we got our answer. Thanks for watching the video. If you would like to see more puzzles, math involved activities and problems from different math competitions and Olympiads, please subscribe to this channel. This is the SQRT channel and I hope to see you in the next.